fellow Chelsea supporters, here at the Blue Day podcast, I am delighted to welcome this individual on the show today. He made 53 appearances for the club, keeping 10 clean sheets. Plus, he played alongside with Kevin Wilson, Tony Dorigo and Kerry Dixon. Here is Roger Freestone. Roger, welcome to the Blue Day podcast. How are we? Fine, thanks. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is absolutely mine, Roger. Thanks very much for spending the Saturday afternoon with us. I appreciate it. Um, just to start off the conversation, I just want to ask you to sort of take us back to the early part of your love for football. Did you have any influences when it came to deciding to become a professional footballer? Um, it was obviously the the Ray Clemens, Peter Shelton uh, era, goalkeepers, you know, and um, I was an outfield player to start with from a school. I used to play in uh, midfield and uh, really enjoyed it. But obviously, um, for some reason or another, the, the, the manager put me, put me in goals and I sort of excelled from there, really. And what was it, I mean, we'll touch on later about you being the goalkeeper for Chelsea, but what was it about sort of that position that you was fond of? Well, like I say, growing position. up watching the big match and match of the day and the goalkeepers were sort of the heroes, weren't they? You know, and everybody wants to be a hero. And uh, I suppose that what, you know, I, I, I went in goals and I just enjoyed it, you know, and I suppose my, my hands were quite big, so that helped. Um, but, you know, I, I played, uh, or I was playing on a Saturday morning, a Saturday afternoon and a Sunday afternoon. Uh, for the for when I was younger, and uh, it was always in goal. So, I mean, the managers must have seen something in me to put me there. And uh, like I say, I, I, I was there for what 25, 25 years or so. And when you were sort of growing up and you was coming through the ranks and the youth systems, what would you say was the best advice that you was given? Just go and enjoy it. You know, you're going to make mistakes as, as a goalkeeper. It, it's one of them positions where you could be a hero or, you know, it can be an absolute nightmare for you. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had that in many occasions, more more often than not being a nightmare. But, uh, you know, it, it's one of them positions where you've just got to go and, and, and be bold and be strong. And uh, that's what I've always been, always, always, always done. Now, ironically enough, we've just passed the 35th anniversary of you signing for Chelsea from Newport County for a fee to be in the believed the region of a 75,000 to 95,000. How did this move come about? Because at the time you was, I believe, in, in still in your teens. So do you remember much about this particular move? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of talk in the paper of um, in the local paper in Newport uh, um, of Tottenham, Tottenham being the being the club that we're gonna sort of I was gonna sign for, and uh, and then I think it was uh, the eighth of March because it was my wife's birthday on, or my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, her birthday on the ninth, and we played Chesterfield on the Sunday, the eighth of March, and we beat them two 0 and I was getting showered after the game, and and the the, the chairman came in and said, "There's there's somebody would like to to see you in uh, in in in." in my office so I went in there and, and I think people associated with Chelsea were in there and they said you, you go in tomorrow to sign for Chelsea at Stamford Bridge and, and that was it that was just so it was no uh, no agent so I didn't have an agent in them days I think the manager uh, of Newport John Relish uh, the joint managers John Relish and John Lewis um, I met them at, at, at the, the ground at seven o'clock in the morning and I always remember my father saying to me, don't sign for him, ring me, don't sign for him. <laughs> All right, I won't sign. Gets up there and as a tour of the, the, the ground and we went to Harlington and met uh, Peter Bonetti, met the cat. And uh, and 20 minutes later, I signed. And uh, like I say, it wasn't the best deal for me. But I think it was it was more forced upon me because Newport was absolutely desperate for the money. They were in such financial difficulties that uh, I think whatever um, John Ollins offered me, <laughs> I was going to be signing there and then, and that was it. You know, there was. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I signed and I played the last six games of the season, and and then I got a new contract straight away. So, you know, it it wasn't it wasn't too bad in the end. 
you've mentioned John Hollins. He was the manager at the time of you signing. How influential was he for you to joining the club? John was he was fantastic. I mean, a lovely, lovely man. I mean, we we had uh, he, he came down to Swansea as well, and we won the championship at, at Swansea with John um, in two thousand. And uh, you know, we, we we had a few ups and downs there, but at, at, at um, Chelsea, no, he was he was him and Ernie Wally. I mean, John was good cop, Ernie Wally was bad cop, and uh, but um, no, fantastic manager, fantastic. Now, do you remember your first day at training and what stories do you have when you Blimey. first arrived at the club? Well, I, I was a boy from the Valleys one night, you know, I was, I think I was, I was 18. I was playing for the youth team on, uh, on a, on a Wednesday or Tuesday on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday with Gwyn Williams. And I was playing for the first team then on a Saturday. You know what I mean? So it, I, I was, you know, it, it, I'm way out of my comfort zone, way out, you know, a, a, a young lad. From the valleys, you know, and and going up to the big smokers, so so to say, and no, it was it was daunting, really daunting to, to train with like, the likes of Kerry Dixon, Pat Nevin, uh, Mickey Hazard, you know, Doug Ruby, I mean, Big Doug, blow me, you know, frighten me to death, frighten me to death. But I mean, no, it was great when I got you know got into the first team, and they were great, they were fantastic, you know, the, the Joe McGoughlin, Colin Pates, Colin Bumstead, all experienced boys. You know, and and there's you know me, and then you know later on it was Graham Robertson, Peter Nicholas, obviously you know really you know fantastic players to to learn to learn from, you know, and I did learn learn a lot whilst I played in the first team. I mean, you know, under John Ollins, I played a few games, and then Bobby Campbell came in, and we didn't really see eye to eye, and he brought Dave Besant in then, didn't he? Put Dave in to, for the push for promotion when we got releg, you know, the season we got relegated, we went straight back up the following season. I think I played twenty odd games that season, and and you know, disappointing to be dropped. But I was a kid. I was I was young. Do you know what I mean? I was young. You know, what could I do? What could I do? I went out on loan to Hereford. Um, went on loan to Swansea in '89, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And in all fairness, you know. I bought a house in Reading, which was sort of half hour, hour uh, half hour's drive from uh, Harlington, where we trained. Trained, so it was ideal. But we wanted to go back home. We wanted to move back to Wales. And at one stage, I was looking just to quit football altogether, and you know, just get a job in the steelworks or in a factory or something, because I was that disillusioned with uh, with, with life with Bobby Campbell. Mm. We'll touch on Bobby Campbell later and obviously how that sort of turned sour. But you made your debut for Chelsea shortly after joining. It was in the April against Queen's Park Rangers. When did you know you was going to start that game? And what was said to you before the game, either by John Hollins or by your teammates? I mean, you're asking, I mean, how long ago was this? When was this? 87? 87. How many years ago was that? 40, 50? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I can remember I was really nervous. Really, I mean, like you say, I was I, I, I probably played played in the youth team on the Wednesday and then uh, to find out then on, on probably on the Friday that you were playing. Um, I think it was, it was Easter, wasn't it? It was Easter time. Yes. yes. It was Easter time because I can remember, I can remember travelling home after the game and we played, I think we played Southampton on the Monday. And um, we were supposed to be in training on the Sunday. And I was driving back up the M4 and I had a blowout and I, I broke the car off. So, and obviously in the days, it was the days before I, I had a mobile phone and I didn't know anybody's contact numbers at Chelsea. And I was panicking because I didn't turn up for training on the Sunday. And I just turned up for the game on the Monday and explained the situation. And they were fine about it, but obviously the car was rolled off. It cost me a few few quid. Um, but no, I mean going back to the game, um, I think John Cody made his debut that day as well. John Cody made his debut, and no, it was uh, obviously it was a, it was great to, to well play play in the first division or the Premier League. You know, um, being a kid, you you don't really take it all in, do you? And then playing on playing on the plastic as well. The plastic pitch was uh, difficult, but no, thoroughly enjoyable. 
I think I played the last six games of last season, man. Yes, I was going to say, you had a run of games in the side due to Eddie having the yeah. long-term knee injury. And you did pl- you played sort of between that point to the end of the season. You must have been happy with your performance and development early on, knowing that you was having those games so soon after signing for the club. Yeah, like I said, I'd, I'd only played 13 games for Newport, 13 league games. So, like I say, I was I was such a novice. I was I was a kid. Yeah, you know I mean, so to get thrown into the deep end, really. I think Tony Gordon was at the club as well, um, and and I was playing in front of Tony. So I think the belief that that the manager showed in me was was fantastic. You know, we I think you know we, we always remember the family coming up for the last game of the season. It was Ian Rush's last game before he went to Juventus, and I think we were playing at the time. We were playing playing. Um, we played Southampton on Easter Monday. I think it was only about thirteen thousand there, and then the last game of the season. I think it was about thirty six thousand crammed into into the into Stamford Bridge. I mean, it was. It was fantastic. Absolutely. The atmosphere was fantastic. Everything was, was you know, it got up blimey. You know, this is never, never played in front of a crowd like that. And, you know, I think we drew three all that game, you know, so, uh, yeah, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. And you've mentioned him earlier, but how significant did Peter Bonetti play as he was the goalkeeping coach for Chelsea in the late eighties, how significant was he for your development? I was brilliant because obviously I'd never had a goalkeeping coach before, um, being at a small club like Newport, and and to go to Chelsea and and to you know to to have a England you know a legend you know England legend and Chelsea legend training you and you know it was fantastic and you know it, he was he was fantastic he, he was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, he taught me so many things, agility-wise, you know, fitness-wise, and, and yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Later on in '87, you returned to the side in November due to Eddie having to retire. Did you see this as the perfect opportunity to be to become the club's number one goalkeeper? Uh, honestly, you no, know, um, because obviously, like I said. I was 19 years of age, you know, uh, goalkeepers now mature well into their 30s, you know, 30 plus. I was 19. I was playing in, in the in the Premier League as it is now, you know, uh, it's daunting, absolutely daunting to play. You know, the, the game was different then. It was tougher, a lot tougher in, in, in the olden days, shall we say. You know, now, I mean, to be playing now, blimey. Fantastic! It looks so easy to play now. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working down at Swansea on match days and, and hosting and what have you. And I go down there and I watch. I think bloody hell, I could, I could, I could still do that. I can still do that. Do you know what I mean? And it, it just looks so easy. It looks so easy. So no, to going back to the, the question, no, I didn't. I didn't. I mean, aspirations to be to be first team goalkeeper, um, but. You know, it wasn't the be all and end all. I was learning my trade. I was learning, you know, and, and Eddie was fantastic with me. You know, he, he used to travel to away games and, and, and room with me. And, you know, and it, it, he was fantastic, really, you know, kept me going, encouraging. And it was such a shame that his career was cut short by the knee injury that he sustained. You know, it's so unfortunate. But, you know, um, you know I would have quite happily been happy to have been number two to Eddie to learn, you know, to grow into the grown into Chelsea, where I wasn't really given a chance to grow in. I was sort of thrown in at the deep end. And yeah, it was tough. It was tough, you know, it, like you say, being a goalkeeper, it is a tough uh, position to be in. And it was during that period that the club was not picking up results and it, the club were falling down the table Looking back on it now, why do you think the side struggled so badly? Because they did still have some top players in that side. In in your opinion, being the man between the sticks, seeing it quite clearly, why do you think Chelsea struggled at that period? I don't know. I think there was a there was a little bit of animosity from what I recall with a few players with John Hollins. I mean, he wouldn't play. He wouldn't play Mickey Hazard. 
which was, in my eyes, a crime because Mickey was so skillful he could win any game on his own. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and and you know it was rumors going around the change rooms about fallings out and you know being you know I, I, like I say I was a kid I was a kid and I I didn't get involved in any of that I wasn't experienced enough to get involved in any of that but yeah it, I mean it was disappointing because I mean when I think when Eddie was injured the first game we played we played uh, I played was Arsenal away. I, Hybrid, and we lost three nil. But I can I can still see it now. Where Roy Wegley's threw on goal, and somebody in the crowd's blown a whistle. He's clean through on goal. Somebody in the crowd's blown a whistle, and he's kicked it. He's just kicked it out, and everybody's wondering why. He, I mean, we could have gone one nil up. It would have been a different story. But we went on a horrendous run. Um, after that, we we didn't win for what? Oh, blimey, I don't know, fifteen games maybe, fifteen maybe more. And then obviously John paid for the paid for that with his job, then didn't he? Um, yes, he was relieved of his duties with Bobby Campbell taking over. Was you surprised at that decision, or as you say, because there was rumours of discontent? Um, well, it, it was the first time that I'd seen a ma- first time I'd seen a manager sacked. You know, I, right. I, like you say, it. So, uh, and then the person coming in, um, Bobby Campbell, obviously had a dislike for me and. And the feeling was mutual. Um, so, yeah, it, it became a little bit difficult for, for myself then. Um, what was Chelsea. the issue over? Was it just clash of personalities or was there something? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, it was uh, many times, you know, I mean, if I put myself in issues and, and I was coaching a young kid, I would try and give him all the confidence that, that you could. But um, he was completely, he just wanted to be little people, you know. Right. And unfortunately, I was the one who sort of um, was getting uh, the rough end of the stick, so to say. But um, no, I mean, you know, we, we've had our, we had our ding-dongs. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, come to a, come to a head where he tried to um, farm me out on loan over Christmas to Hartlepool. You know, and I said, no, I'm not going. You know, I didn't want to go. Uh, obviously, I, I went back home to Wales and spent spent Christmas at home with my family. You know, and uh, I say my family was more important than going to, to than furthering my footballing career because I I was at a stage there where I was on the verge of sort of just retiring, retiring at 20 or 21. You know what I mean? That's that 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 was how um, I felt. And how the man made me feel, basically, which is disappointing. You should never, you know, no young player should ever go through that. Did you speak to any of your teammates about your personal situation? Was I did, yeah, I did, and and they were they were they were helpful, you know, and and you know, I I, I they told me to put a letter together to Bobby Campbell and explain the situation, and which I did, and and then it was just it was just sort of belittled, you know, it was yeah, it was. Frustrating, frustrating, but you know, um, yeah. So it was, it was a part of uh, my Chelsea career which I didn't enjoy at all. And with the club being dropped down a division because of the divisional playoff that they lost to, was there a part of? Was this at the point where you felt it was probably best to walk away from football, or did you feel that maybe? a move might spark your interest again or maybe a fresh challenge. Was this a point where you were thinking of maybe of moving on from Chelsea altogether? Um, well, the, like I say, the, the, always, I, I wanted to come back home to Wales. My wife was homesick. We just had um, our son, Dan. Um, so she was spending more time at home. And it got to the stage where we were we had the house on the market in Reading and we were going to sort of buy it back home in Newport and I was going to move into Diggs and up in, in London and, and sort of travel back and forth. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, it, it, we didn't get, get to that stage. Um, but no, it was, I don't know. I, I mean, when Bobby first came in, he signed Kevin Hitchcock, you know, good lad, good, great, you know, experienced goalkeeper and then obviously Kevin got injured and, and Bob Bobby had to play me then for I think 20 games this the season that we, we got promotion back to the back to the um first division 
um, yeah. which probably pained him, really pained him. But um, I was doing well. You know, we were winning games. We were winning games. Um, the team were confident in front of me. I was confident behind them. And we were winning games well. And so when when um, he went and signed Dave Besant, it was sort of a kick in the teeth, really. It was a kick in the teeth. Um, but I went to see him and he said, look, we need experience. I thought, all right, fair enough. You need experience, yeah. So I was further down the pecking order. And that's where I'm thinking, oh, I just need to get away. I just, I just need to get away. And, and it was either sort of retire or try and get a move somewhere. And uh, I went to Harryford on loan. I say I went to Swansea on loan. I mean, and w- once I had the taste for Swansea, it was close to home in Newport. And I thought, I, j- I just need to... And, and they wanted to buy me, but obviously Bobby Campbell wouldn't sell. For some reason, he wouldn't sell me. They offered money and he wouldn't sell me. We'll talk about that particular move in a minute because I was not aware of that when I was doing me research. I will touch on that in a minute, but... When we talk about Chelsea in the second division, you you played a number of games. It was not like you was a number two. You you did sort of with Kevin Hitchcock being injured, you was given the chance to impress. Did you feel that, that with that Chelsea side that they were good enough for promotion? And was there talk amongst the dressing room that we have to get promoted? Oh, massively good enough for promotion. Like you said, we signed Graham Roberts, Peter Nicholas. Experienced boys, do you know what I mean? Which give us the steel in 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 midfield and and the heart of defence, you know, and the, what you need. And we romped the league absolutely. I think we we had near enough hundred points that season. Scored, I think we scored over hundred goals as well. Mate, you know, or near enough hundred goals. You know, we absolutely romped the division. And uh, you know, say we we even when I was playing, we were doing fantastically well. We were top of the league. And it was disappointing to to lose your place, but you know, like I say, you, you go with the manager's call, however disappointing it is. Um, I think he spent seven hundred thousand on Dave Besant, who wasn't happy at Newcastle, wanted to come back to London, and it was ideal for him. So, but he was fantastic, you know, great, great laugh, Dave. Fantastic, fantastic um, to have in the change rooms. And what was it? good for you sort of looking on your own sort of career to have people like Kevin Hitchcock you can learn from well, yeah, Dave please. Besson that must have sort of given you ma- yeah, massive confidence being able to learn from these guys going forward yeah you're training you're training with top top well I mean he was he was an England international at the time Dave wasn't he you know he he, he was in the squad or he wasn't playing but you know fantastic um, you know, Kevin Hitchcock experience, all experience. And, and the more experience you can gain off people, talking to them, training with them, learning from them, you know, it makes you it makes you better. It makes you better. But you know, any 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 job is gonna make you a better player or a, a better coach or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And and yeah, I think it did. It did, it 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 was, you know, training was aggressive, it was sharp, it was, it was, it was, it was good, it was good. But uh, it was just that sort of feeling of going in and seeing Bobby Campbell every morning. But right. that was painful. Well, I want to touch on sort of the loan spells that you did have. You've mentioned you went to Hereford and then you had that spell at Swansea. You mentioned earlier that Swansea tried to sign you, but Bobby Campbell said no. Was you given any reason why Chelsea sort of rejected Swansea's initial offer or was there no communication between club or player? No, nothing at all. Nothing whatsoever. All all I know is that the chairman at Swansea at the time, Doug Sharp, he, he offered money. Um, he was friendly with Ken Bates. Uh, and um, it was all down to Bobby Campbell and, and he said no. He didn't he didn't want me to leave. It was it was strange. I don't know why. Um, they had well, they had two two experienced goalkeepers there. Um, but um no. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Because you left Chelsea permanently to join Swansea in September of 91. What was going through your mind at this point, you know, with, with the move? And 
what sort of stories can you tell us about this sort of particular move, how it happened? What <laughs> were your emotions after, once the move was completed? Well, we trained, we trained on a Thursday. Uh, I think um, Ian Porterfield and Stan Ten- Tennant were in charge then. And fantastic people, fantastic. You know, you could go and talk to them. They knew, they knew my situation about wanting to go back home and, 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 and what have you. And in all fairness, Ian said to me, look, if I can get something, I will sort it for you. Hmm. Uh, and um, we trained on the Thursday. Uh, and he said, can I have a word? Went in. He said, right, there's a club coming for you. I'm thinking, oh, God, here we go. Where am I going? Where? He said, it's Swansea. I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He said it's a three month loan with a view to a permanent deal. I thought, oh. So I, I thought my wife so I, I mean I, I I went out, I drove out, got got to a phone because obviously didn't have a still didn't have a mobile phone then. Phoned her up. She said, Oh no, where are you going? I said, Swansea, pack your bags, we're going home. And uh it was just a fantastic it was we I mean, we were on well, cloud nine, do you know what I mean? It was I know, like, you, you think, oh, you're leaving a club like Chelsea to go to a club like Swansea. But to me, it was going back home. I knew I'd be first-team goalkeeper down there. And it was sort of, I want to go down there. I took a pay cut to go down there. I took I took a £100 a week pay cut to, to sign for him. But it didn't matter. I was back home. I was back home. And uh, we played, I think, travelled back home on a Thursday. On the Friday, then I was travelling back up to London because we were playing Fulham on the Saturday, and we got stuffed three 0 We lost three 0 I think you know I've blown it. I've blown it. I'm not, they're not going to want me. Do you know what I mean? But no, it all worked out fine in the end. I was going to say you did have a bad career at Swansea. No, I years. don't. I don't. To be fair, <laughs> it was always a case of if they offer me a new contract, it wasn't about the financial, it was about the years. I want, like, give me four years, give me four years, £20 a week more, give me four years. And at, at the end, uh, well, I mean, like, it was always about, because I lived in Newport, it was always about having a, a, a car as well, a club car. So they made sure that I had a club car to travel back and forth as well, which is good of them. Did you have any of the Chelsea teammates wish you well on your move? Did you get any, did you have any sort of conversations with them? About no, it was it all sort of happened within within an hour. That was it. I was gone. I was I was there. I, was, I had a shower. I was gone, and I was it. You know, it. I think it was it, the, the changing room was different in them days. Do you know what I mean? I think it, it was it was. I say it was a lot of experienced boys in there, and you know, I didn't say to anybody, oh, I'm, "I'm going to Swansea." What do you think? It was, I'm going to Swansea. I don't care what you think. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was it. You know, I just wanted to go back home for the benefit of my wife and my child and myself, you know. And so I've gone from near enough retiring a year earlier or whatever to now loving life as a football player. In regards to sort of today's football, if we sort of touch on that, one element of football that people seem to still have issues with and it's still controversial depending on how it's used is... VAR. And Roger, I just want to sort of get your thoughts on VAR, the actual technology itself. Are you for it? Are you opposed to it? What's your overall thoughts on it? I think it takes it takes all the responsibilities away from the referees. And and that is a danger in itself, you know? Um and you probably ask it, the referees and then and they would probably say they could do without it. Because, I mean, how can how can you give offside if somebody's hand is in front of the you know the player? It's 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 a ridiculous. Uh, it's frustrating, you know. It 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 just doesn't seem to be right, does it? It it doesn't. You know, some of the goals that you've witnessed that have been disallowed, and you think why, why? Or then some of the the penalties that haven't haven't been given, and they're plain to see, and you. You know, you you're scratching your head, don't you? you, you it, it's just, it's just inconsistent, isn't it? It it, it is inconsistent, and you know, if they're going to do it, they they need to do it. Like they say they're doing it properly, but they, I don't know. It's 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 a strange one. It, it's 
I mean, we're fortunate, you know, in the, in the championship, but we, we could have done with VAR a few times this season, to be fair, that the, the refereeing decisions we've had at Swans have been bloody awful. You know, it, it, I mean, I don't think we, we've not had one penalty this season at, at, at home, not one for us. You know, it's, it's, and, and we should have had a few. But no, it, I, the thing is, football got along fine without VAR, didn't it? It, it was fine. You know, and, and yeah. I think without it, it 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 wouldn't be an issue. It it I mean it takes away all of the referees' controls, really, doesn't it? It takes away, you know, if they if they're seeing something, they're not agreeing with VAR, what can they do? They can't do anything, can they? You know, they 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 can't go against it. They can't. And it it's just say they probably have to bring it in because of the financial rewards of of the Premier League and, 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 and the football in general. But it, it just needs to be run a little bit better, I think. Now, in regards to the current day Chelsea, of course, it's a lot different to what it was back in the, the late 80s. I know, obviously, with your allegiances to Swansea, have you been sort of keeping in, in touch with Chelsea a little bit, sort of, especially with this season as Thomas Tuchel side... Third in the league at the moment, looks like they will be playing Champions League football, but obviously there's a lot of issues off the pitch that still needs to be solved. What's your thoughts on the 2022 version of Chelsea Football Club? Well, I was going to say they're a lot wealthier than the 1987 version, but I'm not so sure now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... Uh... Uh, <laughs> it's a strange one, isn't it? It's 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 a, it's a massive problem. They find themselves in in a bit of a hole at the moment um, financially. Uh, the wage bills astronomical. I mean, saying that all Premier League clubs are probably the same, but they need to find somebody who's going to bankroll that wage bill, you know, and that's going to be a massive issue, massive issue, you know, and uh, the debts of the the, the, the the debts go away when uh, Mr. Abramovich sells the club, or he take the debts go away, don't they? So there's no debt in a sense. It's just the the running costs, the running costs now of, of, of running well, any football club, I suppose. But you know, a, a club like Chelsea, it's it's going to be it's going to be a strain on on anybody's finances, whoever whoever comes in, isn't it? So it's got to be somebody with deep pockets. Um, and is there anybody out there like that? That's a big question. Well, we'll we'll see how it goes. It'll be um, something that I think will be finally sorted out in in the summer. But Roger, last question f- from me: um, How do you look back on your time at Chelsea? Uh, well, I look, I look back fondly. I, I've got a I've got a. Um, a a second division championship uh, medal, which um, which I'm proud of, for playing some so many games um, in in the promotion winning season. Um, ups and downs, really. Ups and downs. Obviously, um, you know, to to go and, and, and sign for a first division club at, at 18, and you know, it was fantastic for myself. Um, but I look back. Is it? Were they a big club at the time? I'd have to say no, they weren't. They wanted to be under Ken Bates, but obviously the, the crowds that dictated that, that that they weren't. So, um, but I look back fondly and think, yeah, it was a part of my career. That, you know, the first part I enjoyed, the second part not so much. So, um, but um, it's it, like I say, it. Um, I, I I enjoyed my my time there, and you know, with good boys. Experienced players, young boys as well, David Lee, Jason Cundy, you know, Gareth Hall. I was playing youth team football, like I say, with them. And, uh, you know, they they went on and had had good careers with Chelsea and and went further as well. So, you know, it was good. You know, Gwyn Williams, um, who was my youth team coach there. Um, But, uh, no, I, I wasn't sad to leave. I wasn't sad to leave in in 91. It was, like I said, I think um, come to the stage where I just wanted to go back home. And, I mean, it couldn't be more fitting that a club in Wales came in for me. You know, it was just pure luck, I suppose. Well, it's worked out well for you, obviously, with your career 
panning out as it did. And again, would like to thank you for being on the show today, Roger. I really appreciate your time. And, you know, hopefully Swansea do go up and we'll be able to see you maybe back at the bridge one day. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I think we're a few years away from that at the moment. Um, but it would be uh, would be nice, and it would be nice to go back to Stamford Bridge to um, see how much has changed. Well, we'll share see. But Roger, thanks very much for being on the Blue Day podcast, and you take care. Lovely, thank you. All the best. <laughs>